Today is the feast day of the Holy Innocents, December 28th. This is the day which commemorates the innocent uh, male children of Bethlehem who were slaughtered by Herod, who was, uh, of course, trying to eliminate the, new, the newly born Messiah. Um, these children are, in a way, the first martyrs, uh, and that's why they are commemorated uh, in the way that they are commemorated as holy uh, innocents. Uh, innocence meaning the plural form of innocent. Um, this is a day that has a lot of power. Uh, this this is a feast day that I think is very powerful to uh, to the human heart, to the to the empathic heart, to to one whose heart is moved by by innocence and by the the crime of uh, uh, of violence done unto the innocent. Um, and of course, it's a it's a it's a day which brings to mind the entire subject of abortion, which I'm not going to go into uh, for this video. But it's certainly something that can't be uh, can't be avoided. You can't avoid thinking about the uh, the scourge of abortion on this day, this feast day of the Holy Innocents, um, a day in which you know by official decree, children were murdered, just like uh, happens every day. Uh, today, um, in in the United States and elsewhere, across the world, but I want to th want to talk instead about the, the the quality of innocence. And here I'm saying I'm I'm meaning innocence uh, uh, as a noun, uh, or or innocence as as the quality of uh, that ends with c e, as opposed to innocence meaning the plural form of innocent. The, the quality of innocence is something that is powerful, very powerful. It has uh, uh, an incredible um, potency to it. Uh, it is something that brings one to his knees in awe. Um, and if one is of a depraved mindset, innocence is prized for all the wrong reasons. Because the spoliation of innocence, uh, or violence done unto innocence, is uh, when 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 the innocent are sacrificed. This um, you know there there is a, a resultant power um, that uh, is is there's a certain release of power. Uh, which is what the evil and depraved and wicked who who uh, uh, who sacrifice uh, innocence uh, as a as a ritual as a custom. Um, it's it's some it's what they they get out of it. It's why sacrificing children, small children, um, um, or young people who uh, who are virginal, because vir virginity is also a symbol or an emblem of innocence, <clears throat> which isn't to say that sex makes one evil uh, or, or non-innocent, uh, but it, it's something that, uh, you know, has to be, uh, in its place, has to be sanctified within wedlock. Um, but I, I think that it's, it's, it's easy to just gloss over this... Um, this notion of uh, how innocence has a power over everyone, how, over everyone, that everyone acknowledges both good and bad. Just like it's often said, you know, God causes the rain to fall both on the just and the unjust. But well, both the just and the unjust, both the good and the evil, both, both the, um, uh, both the noble hearted and the depraved of heart, uh, understand and acknowledge uh, and in their way bow in awe before innocence. Now, for the wicked, innocence is, is a utility. Innocence is a way of, uh, of obtaining power for themselves. And, uh, but, but, and in a way, uh, of course, it's something that they hate because it is it it, it it's an emblem of that which uh, 
they have forsaken and for and which they they can't get get back ever because of what the 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 road they have chosen but while hating it they also uh have to acknowledge it uh and acknowledge the power of it and you know it's just it's just like what i have heard to be the case uh in demonic possession that uh a demon cannot pronounce the name of, of Christ or Mary or other holy names. It's, it's just too, it's too painful for these names to, to, uh, to leave their, uh, or to, to, uh, uh emerge from their lips. Um, so, so they, they, uh, they refer to Christ as the Nazarene, for example, um, you know, in, in an attempt to mock, uh, and so forth. So, uh, this is all to say that innocence has power that everyone has to acknowledge. And, uh, this day of the holy innocence, uh, is, uh, a, a day, uh, of reckoning, of moral reckoning for everyone. What if, you know, those of us who have chosen to be, uh, to, to try to do good, to try to be noble, to try to, uh, to, uh, to do the will of God, it challenges us to ask how, uh, how much have we done to, to protect and preserve and promote innocence in our own lives? Uh, you know, even if we have, we've all lost our innocence to one degree or another, we've all eaten from the, the fruit, uh, to one degree or another. Um, it's, uh, it's part of our, our state. It's part of our condition. But what have we done? What have we done uh, to uh, to redeem ourselves? Uh, um, what have we done again to protect and promote uh, and promulgate innocence in our fallen world? Where again, it's no matter how fallen and evil uh, everything. Uh, seems to have have become uh in our world there still is this power that innocence has it's undeniable it's something that uh it it it's it's simply a part of uh, uh it's part of the human psyche it's part of what we simply acknowledge uh on a on a primal level we understand, we know what innocence is. <clears throat> and uh, innocence is holy, innocence is divine. Uh, innocence brings us to our knees, uh, again, uh, in, in, front, uh, in front of innocence, to, to coin a phrase, one involuntarily bows one's knees. And... Uh, uh, buries one's face in, in the ground uh, because of the awe that it radiates. So, just a few thoughts on this day of the Holy Innocence, this feast day of the Holy Innocence, December 28th. Thank you for watching.